Well, howdy folks. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another DIY project today. Now, if you saw the video I did recently about this little touch plate controller here, um, when I did this video, I used various parameters to test it out. And one of them was a wave shaper. And it started me thinking, how difficult is a wave shaper circuit? So I did some research and I found an article online. It was actually in Japanese, so I couldn't read it. But um, I'll link it in the description in case anybody can. But what I discovered is you can make one very simply. So I drew this up. So as you can see here, there's really only two components in this circuit. You've got a 100K potentiometer and then you've got a 2N7000 uh, transistor or, or field effect transistor, FET, MOSFET, whatever you want to call it. Um, then you just need three jacks for your CV, you're in and you're out. So very, very, very simple circuit. And so I've got the stuff right here. Here we go. First of all, project box need that, but you need three jacks. Now I'm going to use quarter inch jacks for the audio in and out. So there's one quarter and two quarter. And then for the CV, I'm going to use an eighth inch jack. Now you could use quarters for all three. You could use eighth for all three. You could use RCA jacks if you want. I don't care. You need a uh, B10, B100K pot, and you can see that here. It's a standard pot. Of course, you'll probably want a knob for that pot. And then, here you go, here is your MOSFET. And this is, again, this is a 2N7000. Okay, so that's all you need. Let's build this thing and try it out. Okay, here is the completed product. You can see I got the jacks labeled, the back is on, and I got the knob installed as well. Now, if you have a sharp eye, you might notice that's a different knob than I showed at the beginning. I actually put the other knob on there and then I decided I didn't really like the aesthetic of it, so I decided to try this one. One of the other things I like about it, if you can see the knob's got those little numbers around the outside and I put this little dot, and so there's zero, and there's 10. So if you found a sweet spot, you know, somewhere around here, it makes it real easy to get back to it. So anyway, the next thing, I want you guys to hear it, but I think with a wave shaper, it's actually easier to see it than to hear it. And what I mean by that is I've got this little oscilloscope here and I'm going to use the modular synth behind me and send an analog waveform through the oscilloscope so you can see it. And then I'm gonna send it through the wave shaper so you can see and hear what the wave shaper does. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so here we've got our oscilloscope and our wave shaper, 
And then this uh, plug here that's hooked to the oscilloscope is actually coming, or it's actually an empty cable going over here, and I'm going to plug it into an analog oscillator. And just real quick, if you aren't familiar with analog waveforms, this is called a triangle waveform. And I realize you can't hear anything right now. You'll hear something in just a second. but And you can see why it resembles a triangle. And then this one here is called a saw waveform. And again, it resembles a sawtooth. And then this one here is called a pulse or a square waveform. And again, you can see why. Okay, so now I've got the triangle wave plugged into the wave shaper and this blue cable is coming from a looping envelope. And as you can see, when that envelope cycles, you can see the wave kind of dancing a little bit. It's kind of, um, it's like it's got a ripple going through it. And that's exactly what a wave shaper does. But now what's interesting about this, right now we're at max. And as I turn it down, you'll start to notice something. As I turn down the incoming CV, we actually see more of the wave shaped effect when the CV is a little less. As I increase the CV, we start to see more of the original waveform coming back. So now as I'm increasing it here, you start to see more of that triangle coming through, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's really a unique circuit in the way that that works. Um, so let me also try here, instead of a looping envelope, let me try plugging the CV into a LFO. So again, we kind of see it sort of pulsing through the wave. Now, one bad thing about LFO is when it hits the low voltage, it just kind of um, truncates there. You see, it just kind of rectifies the wave. So let me come over to the saw wave here. And here we really see, saw wave does have a little more harmonics as you can tell, but we really see that wave shaping taking effect here because we've got some more harmonics to mess with. So now again, now we're back to the envelope. Let me go ahead and change the, so again, as I turn the, that level up, Now, right now I'm at the minimum CV and you can see we're getting the wave shaped effect. But as I turn the CV up, we start to see more of that saw wave come back and more of those ripples start to come through. So it's, it's really, again, it's really a unique circuit in the way that it works. Let's try swatching, switching this over to the LFO real quick. So we can see it really rectifying that. Let's see if we can tweak that, uh, that amount. So we can really start to get some really cool timbres there. And it's all happening because that audio is essentially passing backwards through the MOSFET. Now, real quick, I just want to show you something. If you were to hook this up wrong, like if you made a mistake and you accidentally hooked it up wrong, or maybe if you did it on purpose, look what happens if I reverse it. It just kind of works almost like a VCA. Like, as I increase it, it sort of changes the volume. So if you get it backwards, it'll just work as a VCA. Or you could say that's a bonus. Like if you, if you, uh, you know, kind of want it to do double duty, um, it can also be sort of a crude VCA. But as a wave shaper, I really think this is a cool circuit. Okay, so there you have it. That was the DIY wave shaper. Incredibly simple circuit, very quick to build and pretty darn cool. Now you might be thinking to yourself, could I make that into a pedal? And you easily could, um, but you probably wouldn't want a CV jack if you're gonna do this a pedal. What you probably wanna do is just build a little LFO circuit. There's actually several of them out there and then just hook it where the jack would be. And then it would probably have its own little rate knob. Um, so you'd need a slightly larger enclosure, but you could easily do that. And then that LFO would provide the CV instead of you having to patch it in. Um, if you wanna make this into a Eurorack module or a 5V module, you could easily do that by just mounting all of this on a panel. Um, you know, it's, there's a lot of what you, a lot of things you could do with uh, this simple circuit, and I love it. It's just two components, super cool. There you have it. If you like what I do on this channel, I'd really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button for me. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys soon.